One of the most useful models in the world of clean language is the problem remedy outcome model devised by Penny Tompkins and James Lawley. It's particularly useful in coaching, but it's useful in pretty much anywhere you might use clean language because of the way it gives you a sophisticated way of understanding what your client is paying attention to at any particular moment and also suggests what to do about that in terms of what question you should ask in response to whatever your client says. Now because you've already looked at my video about the power switch technique you've already got a head start on this one but if you haven't already seen that video please go ahead and look at that now. The problem remedy outcome model starts by linguistically defining three categories of things that clients might be talking about. And these are not the only categories there might be. There are loads of other possible things they could be talking about. But these are really important ones. And the P and the R and the O stand for problem, remedy and outcome. And they're defined in quite specific ways in this model. An outcome is what the client wants. And it's usually reasonably easy to spot an outcome because the client says, I want. So I want a new job. That's an outcome. Slight twist in this model is that it also counts as an outcome if the client says, I need. So any desire word. So I know in some models of outcome, I need would not count as an outcome, but in this model it does. Any desire word, want or need, wish for, those kind of words, then it's an outcome. Problem is slightly more tightly defined than we did in the power switch. Really the power switch is for both problem and remedy. So it does work for both problem and remedy. But in this model, a problem is defined by the fact the client can't even talk about what they don't want. They're just deeply immersed in their misery and they're just complaining about it, moaning about it. Life is hell, it's all shit, the whole thing's gone to pot. You can tell from their body language, from their voice tone, from all sorts of other clues that they don't like this state of affairs but they're not even getting round to saying I don't want it, I don't like it. Now when people do get round to saying I don't like it, I don't want it, that counts as a remedy. Now I don't like the word remedy because it doesn't really seem to capture the whole sense of this middle category for me. But it's the word that Penny and James have used, so it's the one, one more use for the time being. So in this middle category of remedy, the person is talking about what they don't want or what they want less of. They're saying the words, I don't want or I wish I didn't have. There's that negative sense in their language. Of course the voice tones there and all those other things. And this remedy category is also where you put things which are a mixture of outcome, problem, remedy, all sorts of stuff. If you can't really distinguish it, count it as a remedy. So if somebody's saying, um, I want a new job but I'm not sure it will really help because I hate my life, you know, that kind of thing, it's a rare old mixture, treat that as a remedy. So you've got an outcome where someone is saying clearly I want or I need or I wish for X. You've got a problem where they're deeply immersed in general misery and shit. And you've got this middle category of remedy where they're saying I don't want or I want less of. And from there we can move on to defining 
what questions you should ask in each of these contexts.